Hello everyone, welcome to Reach Codes. Today I'm going to talk about system design of Spotify.com or Apple Music or YouTube Music. All falls under the same bucket and this system is going to be a microservice based architecture. So when you talk about system design, you have to talk about four important steps. The first one is the scope. In the scope, you have to clearly say what you are going to cover in the subject and what else you are not going to cover, right? This gives a context to the audience and it clearly explains what you are going to talk about, right? Once the scope is done, you have to talk about the key components, right? So the key components in this is like, you know, how the audio is getting stored, how it gets distributed to different locations for the global audience and how it is made with the low latency, etc. right? Those are the key components in the system. Once the key components is done, then you have to talk about the data model. So the data model becomes bread and butter of any kind of a system design, right? So without database, most of the system doesn't exist. It could be a MySQL based database or it could be a Cassandra or MongoDB, right? Whatever it case, you have to clearly define the database model for the system. So it gives a clear view for the user how you are going to talk about and how you are going to correlate with the different APIs, etc. Right. Once this is done, then you have to talk about the scalability or robustness of the system. This is where you talk about different things like CDN, uh, things like, you know, load balancer, things like, you know, fault tolerance, replication, etc. has to be covered in this area. Right. So your focus and attention should be primarily on the key components. And based on that, you can talk about all the scaling areas which can be covered in the later sections as well. Right. In this, we'll talk about what is in the scope and what is not in the scope. In the scope, we'll talk about creating an account. We'll talk about uploading the music by the publishers. We'll talk about distributing the music and how to search the music. And also we'll talk about listening to the music and how to add an item to the playlist, right? So we will not cover something like, you know, creating a client application. We will not talk about unpublishing the audio or video. And also we will not talk about removing the item or uh, uh, music from the playlist, right? So here we'll talk about the pseudo API for a minimum viable product, right? So first is we need a API to create an account. So the account service API will have an app key, which will have a username, which will have a password and address, right? So we will have an API called upload service. This API is primarily used to upload the audio from the pub publishers or from the Spotify.com or any label owners, right? So it will have something like uh, app key, album type, artists, market, labels, name, release date, tracks and restrictions as well as the URL. So we will have an API called search service. So search service is primarily you go into the UI and you give the information like what is a track name or what is an album title. It goes and searches from the backend. It gives out the results, right? That's where the search API is used, right? Then we'll also have an API to have add something to the playlist. So that is something like, you know, you are going to add an item or adding the music to the playlist, right? So here you will have an app key, playlist ID and track ID. We will also have something called view service. This is a service primarily is used to play the audio or the video, right? It requires app key as well as the song ID. We will see more detail about that in the future sections. So then we'll talk about a payment service. Payment service has app key or card info, right? So basically pay payment service is required to collect the payment from the different subscribers, right? The Spotify.com or YouTube music is kind of a subscription service where you can have a monthly sub subscription service or a free service, right? So when a user is subscribing to a monthly subscription service, he has to say pay some money when it has to be auto subscribed, right? So that is why we need the payment service, right? In this section, we'll talk about the database schema or model. And again, it is a minimum viable database and you can keep on extending the database based on your need or based on your necessity, right? So here you have a user DB. The user DB has the tables like user table and you have a subscription table and you have a payment info table and you have a table for creating a playlist and playlist is pointing to the track table where it has all the information related to the tracking, correct? So since it is a subscription based model, I'm going to have a subscription table where user can have a monthly subscription or yearly subscription or they can have a, a free subscription as well, right? So one more thing is instead of using a MySQL based database, you can also have a MongoDB or Cassandra to store this information. So here I'm considering MySQL to make it simple, correct? So the next database is a metadata, right? In this, we have information for album and its track, right? So album table will have information related to the album's name. It has an image URL. It has a release date, genres, track ID, and album type, right? So album, in turn, it's connected to track table where you can have multiple tracks related to this album, right? So this can be also in a Cassandra or MongoDB. For simplicity, I'm having it as a MySQL, right? And again, it is a minimum viable database and I'm not having much information or I'm not going to do any normalizations for this. If you require, we can keep on extending to make it 
more robust, right? So since it is a microservice based architecture, I am not clubbing all the tables in one schema. We are having multiple schemas so that, you know, microservice can interact with the different database and make it simple, right? So when you talk about system design, you also need to talk about the capacity plan. So here I consider one simple example of user table and I calculated the capacity based on the data currently it has and based on the future growth, right? So similarly, you can calculate it for all other information like, you know, what is the storage capacity required for the storing the audio file or video file? What is the capacity required for log files? What is the capacity required for other information as well, right? So you can scale up and you can do the complete full fledged capacity based on your estimation, right? So here, let's see how it has been done. So I've considered a user table in this. I have taken all the fields like user ID, name, email, phone, username, password, address, address. And each one has a different bytes and these bytes are kept in the, this column and I have total and it has giving about 241 bytes, right? So if you look into the current total of uh, Spotify, for example, it has 200 million users. So if I want to have 200 million users and it means 200 million into 241, it gives around 49 GB, right? So similarly, I also noticed that how many subscribers are added every quarter, right? So if this gives a data of around 60 million right so if you want to add 60 million users every quarter and if it, each line takes about 241 bytes the total is going to be 15 gb for every quarter right so based on this calculations you can come out about the capacity of how much it is required for one year or you can even come about what is the capacity required for another five years right so this gives an intention or an impression to the interviewer how you are calculating the capacity and you are really understand about the storage of the system right so in this, we are going to talk about one of the key component of the system design. Basically, we are going to talk about how do you distribute the audio files from the source to different audience across the globe, right? So this actually involves six steps. Let's let's talk about the six steps one by one. So the first step is capture. The capture is nothing but we are storing all the raw files or audio files into the different storage location. Let's say if you are using AWS based architecture, we will be storing that in the S3 bucket, right? So once the video or the audio file is captured in the storage location, the next step is the compress. See the files or audio files originally it may, it may be in the larger size and we cannot transport it with the larger size, right? So we have to compress that. So for compressing, we are using an encoder. It could be H264 or any other encoding format, right? And there are also a lot of SDKs and standalone applications which are available to compress the audio or video files. So once the compression is done, the files are getting packaged to send it to different media servers. So we have multiple protocols. Primarily, we use protocols like HLS or RTTP to break these files into different chunks and it is sent into the media server. So RTTP is from the Adobe and HTTPS or HLS is from the Apple, correct? So once the packaging is done, the files are sent into the media servers. In the media server, a lot of operations are done. Primarily, we are focusing on four different operations, right? So one is changing the protocol. The next is changing the codec, changing to multiple bit rates and also or creating the files of different quality, right? So why do we need to this operation? For example, why do we want to create a different quality, right? So users might be having a different devices on their hand, right? So now all these devices may not be reading or are capable of having the facility to read the high quality files right so some might be having a 7, 780 pixel some might be having a high definition files right so that is the reason the media server plays a major role in converting into different formats or, or different quality so that it can be distributed to the different users based on their capacity or the ability of their device right so once the conversion happens the next step is distribution so what media server does is it distributes to multiple content delivery network with the help of a web servers and through the lot of bad jobs, right? So basically the content delivery networks are, dis are located at different locations of the globe and the file gets distributed into the different locations, right? So that the client who are closest to the content delivery network can read those uh, files efficiently so that, you know, it has a less latency. So that is the purpose of distributing to the different content delivery network, right? So the final step in this process is play. So basically you have a client which are capable of reading this, those audio files. The client can directly query or it can read the different URLs located at the content delivery network and it can start showing up the video or it can start to play the audio based on whatever device the client is having, correct? So there are totally six steps involved in distributing to the audience and the source. Basically they are capture, compress, package, convert, distribute and play, right? 
In this section, we are going to see the end to end system design with all the architecture diagram and the blocks, right? So when we talk about the system design for Spotify.com or Apple Music or YouTube Music, three different things are involved, right? One is the publish, the second one is the distribute, the third one is how do we search and listen to the music, right? In the publish step, what happens here is we have a metadata DB and we also have a raw media server, right? So the publishers are primarily the Spotify.com or the label owners or the title owners. And what they do is they go and publish those videos or audios into raw media server as well as into the, the meta information are stored into the metadata DB, right? So this is primarily done through the upload service, right? So upload service is uh, put into the Docker container and it is deployed into the auto scaling group so that it can scale based on the necessity, right? So we already talked about what the metadata DB has, right? It has all the information related to the album and title, right? So once the publish is done, the next step is distribute, right? So basically what is distribution is all the files which are available in the raw media has to be transferred into the media server and from there it has to be taken into the content delivery network. Let's see how that works, right? So now we have a media server. So as we already saw, media server plays a major role in doing the changing the protocol, changing the codec, creating multiple bit rates and creating different quality, right? So the files get transferred into the media server with a lot of processes. After it gets transferred into the media server, it goes into the distributed network which is called CDN right so CDN is placed across the globe and you know the file gets transferred on different CDN location so that the users who are close to the CDN can get access to the file with low latency right so that is how the CDN comes into the picture right so I have an another video how CDN works if you are really interested you can watch that as well I'll put that in the description section right so once the audio or video file gets distributed to the CDN the next step is search and play here, what happens here is you have a client, the client in turn will connect to the load balancers, right? So client can be multiple devices. It can be an iPhone device or it can be an Android device or it could be an embedded devices like that, right? And it, you also have the clients coming from smart TVs, etc. right? So each one has its own capability and capability based on that the response are going to come back to the clients, right? So client actually it connects to the load balancer and load balancer in turn connects to the auto scaling group. In the auto scaling group, we have different Docker containers which are running on pods and they are, they are again uh, put into the nodes, right? So it can scale up or it can scale down based on the need, right? So now you have different services which are deployed into these containers. So different services are like, you know, search service, view service, account service, add to playlist, and you have services called payment services, right? So these are deployed based on the need and it can grow up or grow down based on the configurations within the Kubernetes cluster, right? So let's take one by one. Let's take a search service. So let's say, let's say a uh, request is coming to the search service from the client, right? So it goes and connects to the metadata DB based on the information or based on the query string from the UI and it gives the information back to the UI, right? So look at the red line. So search service connects to the metadb and it comes back through the rules engine and the rules engine gives the output to the UI, right? So the basically the primary purpose of the rules engine is in this business model, you have a lot of configurations and you have a lot of rules which has to be validated and based on that response has to come. So one of the example is, let's say there are a lot of limitations or licensing capability for each and every audio. For example, you cannot have the audio displayed across the globe, right? Some country might be having the restrictions or there may not be license for those countries. So those kind of business validations are happening in the rules engine and it is a very robust system where all the rules and are validated and it is based on the rules validation. The, the system aggregates the different search response and gives backs to the client, right? For example, if you look into the clients like embedded service, embedded devices, you don't want to have all the response which is bigger in size. So they might be limiting the structure to give it to the embedded device. For an, in other cases, you may Apple TV or Samsung TV can be capable of getting the larger responses, right? In this case, you will give a response which is customized for Apple TV or Samsung TVs, right? So that is a different mechanism you can follow based on your requirements, right? So the next service is a view service. View service also works similar to the search service, but only thing is with the restriction of not getting instead of so many lists, it will give only a specific view, right? So view service takes, takes the, uh, the query string, which is related to specific, uh, specific uh, track or specific album. It again goes to the metadata, gets certain information, and it is validated in the rules engine. And after that, it comes back to the UI, right? 
that is how uh, the rules engine plays a major role in uh, distributing or it is playing a major role in filtering some of the some of the items which are coming from the metadata right so the next service is account service account service internally connects to the user db since it is a microservice based architecture it connects to a different database which is called as a user db right so basically when you want to create an account you can use the account service to create an account in that you give the username you give all the address address information and also you can say the subscription information let's say you want to subscribe for a monthly subscription in spotify right so now the payment service comes into the picture and it go and connects to the payment service internally and the payment is detected and based on this account service is configured right so now you have set up everything like publish and you have distributed your audio or video to different cdn network and your client is also configured it is also connecting to the different services in the auto scaling group right so now the final thing is you have to watch the videos right so based on your view service response it will have a url which will be a cdn url where you can go and connect directly to watch so as soon as you get the view response it will have a url connecting to the cdn network right so when you click this url watch this uh, red line based on the token authentication it goes and connects to the cdn and it starts to download the video or audio from the cdn network to your local device or to the client device and it will start to play right so that is how the whole system is working from end to end so let's see how to implement the system with the amazon infrastructure right so we will have something called amazon s3 to store our raw files right then we'll also have something called elastic transcoder which is similar to media server which we see which we saw in the previous screen right so we will also have another s3 bucket to store all the transcoded files right so now what we are going to do is we are going to have a pipeline established between s3 and transcoder and again from transcoder to the s3 which is for the transcoded files right so we will have a configuration set up in the transcoder in such a way that whatever files which are coming into the s3 gets transcoded and after transcoding it has to be placed in another s3 bucket which is a transcoded files right so now all our file gets transcoded we can also configure in such a way like right? you know once the file is getting transcoded it has to be transferred or it has to be distributed to the cloud front cloud front is nothing but amazon cdn so they have a worldwide network where it gets distributed across the globe similar to what we have seen in the previous screen so once it gets into the cloud front or it is distributed across the network across the globe the next step is you have a client the client what it does is you can connect to different cloud network and you can get the files based on the need so these how the client gets to the cloud front how it gets the different infrastructure or the information that we saw in the previous screen it is similar to what we did in the previous screen right so that is how we set up this this component or this infrastructure within the aws right in this section we'll talk about how to have the robust system right so if you want to have a robust system you have to understand a lot of internal factors about the system and the system design right so some of the key things are you have to talk about the tech stack used so i have covered in detail about the tech stack used in the next section right so some other factors you have to talk in the interview are about the fault tolerant you have to talk about high availability the performance the backup you have to talk about the deployment the security and monitoring of the system as well as logging the some of the key features or some of the bugs or errors into the system as well as you have to talk about scaling the system you need also to cover about the storage capacity right so that is how you fully cover about the robust system and what you are going to display to the interviewer right that's it i have thanks for watching